All over this land, nature's abundance reigns. The beauty we experience enhances, energizes, balances, inspires, and returns us to ourselves. These treasures depend upon the future generations of our planet. It is our hope that we can all learn to become one with life. This is a story about the Connecting People with Nature movement. A national dialogue on children and nature was held at the National Conservation Training Center, NCTC, located in Shepherdstown, West Virginia in 2006. Why did I have these on my wall? Because I needed them to remind me from time to time what this is all about. Don't get so caught up, Charles, in, in trying to make big things happen. Remember, this is what you're working for. These are the ones that I want to prepare the future for. This is why the Conservation Fund allows me to travel around this country talking to Americans, telling them that we are, even though we have protected over 5 million acres of land and someone else has protected 50 million, what we are saying is that unless we change the way we do business, where is our legacy? Now, now think about it. When you pass on, what's going to happen to your legacy? All this work you've done, you just want to say he lived, he died, or, and she contributed to the great outdoor. Is that all? You, if that's all you want, gang, stay with what you're doing. But what we're doing at the fund is we're coming up with ideas how we can reach, reach them right now. We've got to let people know they're not all on the wrong track, that what they are doing is important. Because if not, we're calling John Muir a liar. What did he say? I went out into the wilderness, and when I picked up something, what did he discover? It was connected to everything else. And so if that is true, then we are partners. That is not easy. And so I'm hoping that maybe I can, through the Conservation Fund, make myself available from time to time to share with you and explore with you ways to do that. We just got to bring those people to the movement. Gang, let me tell you, it works. The great outdoors works. We've got to give it a chance. We can't structure it too much, but we've got to get them out there and get them involved. You know why? Because when the conservation fund moves on, where is the legacy going to be? What is the legacy? We have no legacy. And so what we're doing is saying, if we really are serious about this, we're going to buy some insurance. And that insurance is telling the generations to come, this is yours. And this is what we're going to do, and we're going to pass it on to you. You need to be aware of it, and this is what you need to do to protect it. And that's why I think that we brought together and that you have responded to come together and to discuss this. And what brought us together? What brought this varied group of powerful individuals? Who either representing yourself or dynamic organizations caused you to be here, and maybe for the first time under the same roof? The nation's children brought us to Shepherdstown. In a world where fast food and hours and staring at computers are the norm, it's imperative that we give kids a chance to become lifelong love of the outdoors. Across this great country, we lose nearly three million acres of open space each and every year to unplanned development and sprawl. The amount of working lands, our farms, our forests, and our ranches in the United States have declined by nearly 20% more than 200 million acres we've lost in the last half century. Your being here, all of you, your willingness to roll up your sleeves and make something happen is the spark that will launch this national effort. And to make sure that your efforts are the beginning, not the end of this, the Conservation Fund, in partnership with the Secretary of the Fish and Wildlife Service, Rick Lemon and his great team, and Rich Liu, Together, we will be launching later this year a national forum on children and nature. So please join me in welcoming Father 
and best-selling author, The Last Child in the There is something about this issue that draws wonderful people. And you all are drawn to this issue for personal reasons that go deep inside your past, deep within inside your heart. There is a reason that you are here and that you are attracted to this issue. I think that sacred work is being done. I say that in the broadest non-denominational way I can, I can. But this is sacred work. When I was a boy, I would go outside my back door, in the basement door, and I could go through my yard and then through a hedge and then into a cornfield where my underground fort was, and then beyond that to the woods and the fields and then the farms that seemed to go on forever lived at the edge of suburbia in Kansas City. I had such a sense of ownership of those woods. Those woods were in my heart. Those woods are in my heart today. I go to those woods sometimes, even though they are pretty much no longer there in reality. I had such a sense of ownership of those woods that, in fact, as an eight-year-old, I pulled out, I think, hundreds of survey stakes that I thought had something to do with bulldozers that were taking out other ones. Um, I have since learned and been instructed that I would have done a lot more good, been a lot more effective if I just moved the survey stakes around. <laughs> I don't do that anymore, <laughs> very much. So how many here, and I'm gonna be interested to see if the secretary raised his hand, how many here, when you were kids, pulled out survey states? <laughs> well, you're hereby inducted into the secret society of stakeholders. You are, in fact, stakeholders in that. Society. When I finally sat down with him, I said, Matthew, what are you, What's going on? And his exact uh, answer was, Dad, when I think about the future, about the destruction of nature, it's too painful to think about. It's too painful to think about. And his voice broke when he said that. My own son was beginning to dis disassociate from environmental issues because it was too painful to think about. Because my generation has told them it's too late. It's not too late. Everything must change. You are here today because everything must change. Thank you.